Welcome to Read Your Comics. Today, I'm looking at Wildstar number one. Before I get started, I just want to thank all of the subscribers out there. The channel continues to grow and I really appreciate all the feedback. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit like and subscribe. We are back for another book in the journey of 1993. When I did my little uh, preview video, this was one of the ones that actually got a couple of people said in particular they wanted to see. This was definitely one of the image books I liked kind of more at the time, oddly enough. I think because it was a little bit more in the traditional mold of superhero comics. This book was the number 52 book of 1993. I've talked a lot about that year, why it was so important. It was the, the boom year, the peak of the mountain of the comic industry before things started to taper off and as we got into the mid-90s. Um, everyone was kind of coming over to do an image book at this point. It was all well into its second wave, and you you know, you know had the original founders that were all had their things going, but then other creators started coming over. Um, you had Keith Giffen doing Trencher, um, Sam Keith doing The Max, Dale Keown for Pitt. Um, but this one was a more traditional, like kind of house guy, Jerry Ordway. He'd been doing Superman up to this point. He had actually just stopped his Superman run um, right when the reign of Superman started. He, he did work on the uh, Adventures of Superman 500, which is the um, kind of the return issue or the start of the return story of after the death of Superman. And that was his swan song Superman. Then he came over and started doing this, a creator owned project with Al Gordon. Um, we got a typical nineties cover here. We got some embossed blood on the cover. Let's see if we can kind of, you can see it's shiny, but it's also kind of raised. We got some nice silver foil up here at the top. Um, Otherwise, a pretty good cover design. I, I like the cover design here. It's it's very striking, definitely gets your attention. And I remember picking it up. Like, this one stands out in my memory as one of the ones that I was kind of excited to check out. So let's see how it held up. So Al Gordon, who I'm not familiar with, is the co-creator and inker uh, and writer with Jerry Ordway, who is the co-creator and penciler. It doesn't really create Ordway. I think of this as Jerry Ordway's book, but I don't know how much he was involved in the development of the idea behind it. So maybe Al Gordon is the guy. I don't know if Al Gordon was like a regular inker that worked with Jerry Ordway. Um, I, I should look into that. Like most image books, it has a dedication in the front. And this one kind of goes generic and just says to all those who came before. Kind of bland. Probably everybody had dedicated their books to Kirby and Ditko and blah, blah, blah at this point. And he was just like, you know what? Let me just, <laughs> to everybody that's worked on comics, that's made this possible. Uh, so this series, I guess the storyline, I don't know if the miniseries is called Sky Zero. Okay, so it is. So this is a miniseries. If we look in the Indensia down here, Wildstar Sky Zero, number one of four. So this is only a four issue miniseries. And even though it says Sky Zero there, it does not say Sky Zero on the cover. Kind of interesting. Starts out really good. We get like a really cool designed character right off the bat. You get a pretty good look at him there. Um, definitely good look at his face. And, and we're jumping right into action. He's jumping after some machine. Some other character, you know, kind of ambushes him. Get our splash page of... At least half splash page. We introduced to some adversaries and uh, they say their names. A lot of them say their names as they're talking to each other. It's kind of awkward dialogue, but it, it's good establishment of characters. Wild Star Sky Zero by Alan Grant and Jerry Ordway. So this is more of like a traditional style uh, credits page. Most of the image books were just doing the front inside cover. Um... This girl starts making like kind of sexual innuendos about a relationship she either had or wanted with the main character who we're going to call this character Wildstar. He's on the cover. That's who we think he is at this point. She calling him that? She didn't even say his name. Yep. She did call him Wildstar there. 
So this character calls him Wildstar, and then they all have names, but we hardly ever see it. I like get them mentioned again, at least in this one. They start fighting and talking about how it's almost like he was working with them, with these other characters, but maybe he's gone rogue of some sort. All that's left, you know, kind of uh, open. Um, He does mention that he has like a symbiote, which is we're going to guess is the star. And these other characters have one, too. And he rips the one off the face (laughs) of this one dude. I mean, that's a pretty brutal, (laughs) brutal shot right there. And then when he blasts it and they start saying like, oh, that was your these symbiotes must need rest. You can't just like fire off blast left and right. Um, That was his one shot. And then he's kind of weakened. So then they all start taking their turns. Well, the girl comes up to him and she's like trying to kind of talk some sense into him, but also saying like, you shouldn't under it. You know, like you should never underestimate a woman's power. And he's like, I won't and, and punches her. And besides you talk too much, knocks her over to this area where this kid is. Um, what's his name? Hotwire, I think. Yeah. Hotwire is his name. He's like, this is no place for a kid. And we're getting some good like establishment of who these characters are quick within the heat of the battle. And some of them are nobody like this guy. We don't see him again. Really this issue, he gets knocked out and that's pretty much done with him. This guy seems like he's going to be the, the main antagonist. I would guess his little symbiote thing is conking out on him, not giving him, not giving him his uh, power that he needs. Allows Wildstar to get the drop on him. So they basically go back and forth here for a few pages. So right off the bat, number one issue, we're getting quite a bit of action. And I can see why I was drawn to this. And, and like I said, I do like the design of this character. It keeps getting back to this girl wanting, wanting him to just kind of chill out and talk it over. The general guy is like, oh, quit being so... Uh, soft on him and he shoots him they think he's dead for a second but no he's still up and he's like I can't let it in this way and then this like spirit character comes up and he's like you're the first wild star the real one and this which at first I thought only he could see her but they yeah now that I'm looking at it like he's definitely looking up some kind of like foreshadowing here I guess for things to come um You know, she's saying like, no, I'm really just a harbinger. You're the real wild star. You're going to be the hero of this story and blah, 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 blah. And he's got this thing. They're calling it like a temporal disruptor or some, some such. And they're like, you can't travel back in time and live. And so he hits it. And this is kind of like just a big moment of like, okay, he did it. He, he, he clicked the ultimate nullifier. Now what happens? cut back to this to today did i point out in the beginning so the beginning it says tomorrow it's kind of hard to see up there and then it goes today now we're going to establish this scientist dude and he's talking to somebody about like something that he feels like he's discovered like a temporal thing of some sort and they're chatting on the phone about it and uh this kid is like the son of him he goes to caltech and his name is Mickey. And uh, he's like there with his dad. And all of a sudden this like earthquake seems to hit. And they have some blah, blah, blah about that. And it's at the epicenter of this other place uh, that the president sends him to go. Sends this scientist and his team to go investigate what happened. Which is where the other guy he was on the phone with was. So they go and like they show up to this lab and it looks like a, you know, some kind of bomb has gone off. Now, I had to laugh at why the kid gets to go. I get why the science team got to go that all worked there. But the kid was just coming to like chat with his dad and like throw your hazmat suit on and let's get going, Mickey. So they show up and, you know, there's some generals like military people with them, too. And they're wondering what's going on. They're wondering, 
how the Russians were able to do this and stuff. And they're like, oh, the Cold War is over, General. It has to be something else. And as they're like looking into this, and he wanders off. Of, co- of course, the kid is going to wander off, and he finds the Wild Star character. It's like, did I make it? He's like, no, I'm in the sa-. first. He's like, I'm in the same place we were just a minute ago. And uh, he gets another one of these baddies, rips off his symbiote thing, and kills it too. And then he's weak. He's like, well, I'm going to need to rest up before I go get rid of the other ones. And then the kid finds him. Uh, the dad's now like, Where, what happened to the kid? Where's the kid? So here's where I, I don't remember what happens after this. But let's just say this kid's name is Mickey. And earlier in the book, they called the Wild Star character. They said his name was Michael. And they mentioned him going to college and stuff. And the kid is in college. We're dealing with time travel here. I don't know that this happens, but it does seem to be setting up that the kid is him. So he's basically, because he talks, he starts talking to him like, um, oh yeah, like, what are you doing here? Do you know where he's like, of course you know where it is. And um, he basically just talks like he knows the kid. Like he knows who the kid is. He tells the symbiote kind of like, don't you recognize him? Um, Of course, the kid is confused and stuff. Definitely some heavy foreshadowing there, too. I also love how he still has his backwards hat on under his hazmat suit. (laughs) I mean, that's the kind of corny stuff, though, of this, right? Um, So then they go get in a military vehicle. The kid's like, okay, I'll trust you random bloody stranger with a crazy starfish on your chest let me steal a military vehicle and let's get going and the dad is completely confused as to what's going on when the other the other adversaries show up to uh you know leave us with a cliffhanger they also said somewhere in here i missed it when they're looking at yeah right here so they're like you know, using their science stuff to determine how, what happened at the blast. And they're like the leftover radiation or whatever says this happened at 30 years ago. So the story starts out in the future, a day in the future, it goes back one day and this blast is from 30 years ago. So definitely we're going to be playing with some time travel here and maybe in like the sense that, you know, time is relative. It's all really happening at the same time kind of deal. I don't recall what happens with the rest of the story. I think I have number three, um, but numbers two through four are pretty easy to come by. I may I may have picked up the rest of the series. I don't even know if I finished it at the time, to be quite honest. I do remember liking it, though, because I did like the design. But there was... I like the design, and the, the clean artwork is nice, but it's very, it's very Marvel DC of the time and not Image of the time. So... As a young image reader, I could see myself looking at this and saying, like, this is kind of vanilla, even though I do like the way the character looks. At least him. I like him. Some of these other characters look look like they're trying to be image characters. And if you know, like, one thing I did notice is they all have, like, their symbiotes, and hers is coming up over her crotch. (laughs) And she's the one making all the like innuendos and stuff. Like I like men on their knees and uh, there's another part where she makes an innuendo or somebody accuses her. Right there. Her name is Jumpstart. Somebody accuses her of, uh, you know, liking him, but him not reciprocating. So, Anyway, that's that's it for this this first issue. I think it's actually a pretty good starting point as far as like gets you interested in what's happening, sets up a story that seems like there actually is a good story there. Definitely some cheesiness going on with the uh, the lame innuendos, the kid getting to come on the military um, ride, <laughs> I guess, to go 
investigate. But other than that, you know, pretty good, pretty good starting point for this book. Number 52 book of 1993. And that's all I got for today. Until next time, read your comics. Thank you.